Hello and welcome to the show. Today is Friday, April the 29th, 2011. Today we are going to discuss launch vehicles. In order to reach the moon, the next giant leap spacecraft must first reach low Earth orbit. This will require our team to select the commercially available rocket capable of placing at least 1,000 kilograms in low Earth orbit. There are a number of rockets to select from. Today we will talk about these options with our guest, Albert, a well-known rocket scientist. Welcome to the show, Albert. Thank you, Leaper. It's my pleasure to be here today. Perhaps you can start by giving us a list of the launch vehicles that NGL should consider for their mission. Certainly. I should first point out that this list assumes that NGL is the only payload on board the launch vehicle. There are other options that involve piggybacking on board a large rocket, but we will not discuss that today. Also, due to non-disclosure agreements, I cannot talk about the exact costs of the launch vehicles I will discuss today. That's too bad. I'm sure our viewers would like to know those costs. Well, I can say that the costs range from around $10 million to over $60 million, depending on the vehicle. The cost of the launch vehicle is certainly a significant factor in the overall cost of the mission. So, what rockets would you like to tell us about? The first rocket I'd like to discuss is the Russian DNEPR, often pronounced Dnieper. The Dnieper can lift an impressive 4,500 kilograms into orbit. Some of the advantages of the Dnieper include readily available, high reliability and low cost per kilogram. The primary disadvantages are the issues associated with purchasing a vehicle from a foreign company and transporting the spacecraft to the launch site. The Dnieper sounds like a good option if the export issues can be worked out. I agree. Are there other foreign companies that provide launch vehicles? Yes, but only the Dnieper is in the size class and cost range that would appeal to NGL. What about companies in the United States? There are several, but once again I will limit the scope of my discussions to those vehicles most suited for the NGL design. To start with, there is the Orbital Sciences Corporation rocket known as the Taurus XL. The Taurus XL can lift 1,590 kilograms to orbit. Considerably less than the Dnieper but sufficient for the NGL requirements. The Taurus XL? Isn't that the rocket that failed to put the NASA Glory Climate Satellite into orbit recently? Yes, they believe the payload fairing failed to separate correctly, causing the total loss of this mission. Also, the Taurus XL failed to put the NASA Orbiting Carbon Observatory satellite into orbit in 2009. Again, the payload fairing failed to separate. So while the Taurus XL is a good fit in terms of lift capability, the reliability and cost are not so attractive. I see. What are the other options? The next vehicle NGL should consider is the Lockheed Martin rocket known as the Athena 2C. The Athena 2C can lift 1,712 kilograms to orbit which is also sufficient for NGL. I happen to know that Lockheed Martin currently has one of these rockets available and so the lead time required is fairly low, about 16 months or so. Wow! 16 months is considered a low lead time. Yes. The lead time for rockets is often two years or longer. This is a significant factor in a race such as the Google Lunar X Prize. You have not yet mentioned SpaceX. Are they a good option for NGL? Yes, they are. Perhaps the lowest cost option for NGL would be the SpaceX Falcon 1E. The Falcon 1E should be able to lift 1,000 kilograms to orbit. This is the minimum amount NGL needs, with little room to spare. It is probably the lowest cost option as well. This sounds like the best option so far. What is the lead time for a SpaceX Falcon 1E rocket? That's the problem. Right now SpaceX is very focused on their larger Falcon 9 rocket. It's not at all certain when the Falcon 1E will become available. 
Oh, that does sound like a problem. What about buying a Falcon 9? The Falcon 9 is much more expensive and NGL doesn't need such a large rocket. Of course, it is one to consider if NGL decides to piggyback on an existing flight. Thank you Albert for your insights. In summary, what launch vehicle do you feel would be the best for NGL when considering cost, size, reliability and availability? It's a toss up, but I think NGL should consider the Nipper or the Falcon 1E. They should also consider piggybacking on a large payload. Thank you again Albert for joining us today. I hope you will do so again in the future. It was my pleasure Leaper and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Leaper. Good day.